This is a smart factory in Ningbo, eastern China. From the outside, it looks like any other industrial complex. But behind those four walls lies something from a science fiction film. This factory isn't filled with workers. It's staffed by robots, standing at 5 feet 8 tall, coated in silver alloy. These humanoid robots carry out tasks not as prototypes, but employees. This isn't an outlier. Across China, this thing is becoming more and more common. Lights out factories are becoming a new norm, running 24 7 without a single human on the floor. And new robots are doing things like this and this. At Foxconn alone, over 60,000 workers have already been replaced by robotic arms. And in Suzhou, some factories that once needed hundreds of people now run with fewer than 10. Across the world, countries are racing to automate. But what most people don't realize is that much of this new automation already runs on Chinese technology. From car plants in Europe to electronic lines in Mexico, Chinese-made robots are quietly becoming the backbone of global production. China now builds more robots every year than the rest of the world combined. And with every new machine, their grip on global supply chains grows a little stronger. But this isn't just about factories anymore. While Donald Trump promises to bring manufacturing jobs home, Beijing is playing a different game, one built on automation, AI, and advanced manufacturing. For decades, China's power came from building what others designed. Now, it's competing in the fields that define the future. Here's how China is leading the world's robot revolution and how it's quietly reshaping global power. In 2015, Beijing unveiled Made in China 2025, a trillion-dollar plan to turn the country from a manufacturing base into a high-tech powerhouse. On paper, it sounded ambitious, even unrealistic. China wasn't exactly known for cutting-edge innovation, and it was still decades behind Europe, Japan, and the US in advanced technology. But this wasn't just another government slogan. It was a blueprint, one designed to ensure the next industrial revolution would be made in China, too. This so-called robot revolution didn't appear out of nowhere. It's the result of a pressure that's been quietly building for years. A slow economic squeeze that left Beijing with no other choice. You see, for most of their modern history, China's economic model relied on being the cheapest and most efficient place to make things. They had what looked like an endless supply of workers, by far the largest population on the planet, and that workforce helped them turn into the world's factory floor. And by 2010, it had overtaken the US as the largest manufacturer on Earth. But that story, the story that built modern China, is starting to break down. In 1980, Beijing introduced the one-child policy to slow population growth. At the time, this seemed like a necessary solution to a big problem, but it came with a cost, one that's catching up fast. China's birth rates have collapsed to one of the lowest in the world, and the population is aging, with their workforce shrinking since 2012. Factories that once relied on cheap, young labor are struggling to find replacements. And when workers become scarce, they become expensive. In just two decades, average manufacturing wages in China have increased by more than six times. And so, companies have started to look elsewhere. Vietnam, India, and Indonesia now offer what China once did – low costs, young populations, and eager governments. Hiring a factory worker in China today costs around $8 an hour compared to $2 in Vietnam or $1.50 in India. Even giants like Apple and Nike have shifted parts of their supply chain abroad. For the first time in modern history, China is losing its share of global manufacturing, the foundation of its economy. And at the same time, US trade pressure and Western sanctions have exposed another vulnerability. China's dependence on foreign chips, software, and precision machinery. That's why Beijing is moving fast and robots are its solution. China can no longer rely on cheap labor to stay competitive, nor on Western technology to stay advanced. So, it's building something entirely new, a system that depends on neither. Beijing isn't just replacing workers, it's rebuilding the entire backbone of manufacturing around machines it controls. From Chinese-made robot arms and A-driven logistics to domestic chip production, it's creating an economy that no one else can switch off, and one that could soon give its control over others. After announcing the Made in China 2025 roadmap, Xi Jinping himself began visiting robot exhibitions and poured over $30 billion worth of state-backed funds into manufacturing R&D every single year 
the most of any country in the world. Subsidies were rolled out for robotic equipment. Factories were offered tax breaks for automating. And 10 years later, the results are hard to ignore. China is now home to the largest population of industrial robots on Earth, with over 2 million units. And second place is Japan with less than a quarter of that. In 2023 alone, they installed nearly 300,000 new robots, nearly half of all installations on Earth, and over seven times more than the US. No country in history has automated this quickly. A decade ago, factories here barely had any automation, about 25 robots for every 10,000 workers. Now, that number is close to 500. In 10 years, China hasn't just caught up. It's transformed from a nation of cheap labor to the most automated manufacturing force in history. Walk into some of the country's most advanced factories, and you might notice something strange. They're completely dark. No lights, no workers, just machines silently assembling products in the dark 24 hours a day. These so-called dark factories are no longer experiments. They're becoming the norm. In industrial hubs like Dongguan, entire electronic plants that used to require hundreds of workers now operate with less than 10. And one factory, run by Chongyang, Precision Technology famously cut its workforce from 650 people to just 60. All while output tripled and defects fell by 80%. And this automation is spilling far beyond factory walls. At megaports like Ningbo and Qingtao, AIG guided cranes and driverless container trucks move millions of tons of cargo, with a precision no workforce could match. And in Shenzhen, getting food delivered straight to your front door by drones has become a normal part of daily life. That's because, unlike humans, these robots don't need housing, healthcare, or breaks. They can run 24 hours a day, every day, at nearly perfect precision. Some researchers show that automation can cut labor costs in half, all while increasing productivity by 30%. But when machines start to become cheaper than humans, the old laws of comparative advantage start to collapse. For two centuries, trade was built on one idea, that countries should specialize in what they could produce most cheaply. But automation changes the equation. If production no longer depends on wages, then low-cost labor stops being an advantage. The new advantage is technological control. Who owns the robots, the hardware, and the systems that run it? That's what decides where value flows. And China understands that better than anyone. What makes this moment different is how fast it's happening in the physical world. Previous industrial revolutions replaced muscle with machines, but they still relied on people to run them. This one replaces people entirely. These robots aren't just tools. They're autonomous workers capable of learning, adjusting, and scaling without rest. And because every robot is built on the same architecture, progress in one factory can spread across thousands overnight. For the first time, industrial power itself can scale like software. But this is only the beginning of China's deliberate plan. The push isn't just about keeping factories alive. It's about moving up the value chain. Under Xi Jinping, China's mission has shifted from made in China to designed in China. The goal is no longer to assemble products for Western brands, but to master the technology that powers them. You see, a decade ago, almost every industrial robot on Earth came from just two places, Germany and Japan. They were the gold standard, the only nations capable of producing the advanced, precise robots needed to run modern factories. But today, that's no longer true. After years of reverse engineering, massive state subsidies, and persistent research and development, Chinese firms have quietly caught up. Their industrial robot production went from just 33,000 units in 2015 to a whopping 560,000 by 2024, surpassing both Germany and Japan to become the biggest producer in the world. But China didn't just build all these robots just for independence. They have now become the third largest exporter of industrial robots on Earth and they're dominating the global market fast. They are also aggressively undercutting others, selling these machines at up to 30% cheaper than their Western rivals. In the first half of 2025 alone, China exported over $750 million worth of industrial robots. It's a familiar pattern, the same playbook China used to conquer electric vehicles, solar panels, and 5G is now being applied to robotics. Massive state investment, relentless scaling, and prices low enough to wipe out foreign competition. But this time, it's not just about gaining market share. 
it's about becoming the only option for a lot of countries. And it's working. Across Southeast Asia, over 20% of new manufacturing robots now come directly from Chinese suppliers. Even in Mexico, factories producing for American brands like Ford and General Motors are quietly installing Chinese-made robotic arms because they're much cheaper. But here's the part that most people miss. China isn't simply selling these robots. They're offering cheap loans, installation, and training packages the same way that they did with infrastructures under the Belt and Road Initiative. That's the real genius of this new strategy. These robots weren't just built to make goods. They were built to make allies in turn. China into a country the world can't live without, because every time another country buys a Chinese robot, it's not just buying a machine, it's buying into a system, and a system built, coded, and maintained in China. This is what economists call a technological lock-in. The United States mastered it decades ago, using its dominance in semiconductors, aerospace, and military hardware to tie allies and clients into American-made systems they could never easily replace. China is now playing the same game, and their influence extends far beyond just in factories. China is now the world's largest exporter of military drones. The same kind you see on the news, carrying out strikes or patrolling borders in a war. And in 2023, they exported $210 million worth of service robots. From simple A-driven vacuums to actual humanoid home robots, these exports don't just build allies, they build ecosystems. A country buying Chinese industrial arms may also decide to pick up their delivery robots, lawnbots, humanoids, all from the same supplier running on the same software stack. And once a system is built around one supplier, switching isn't just a matter of buying new machines. It means retraining workers, rewriting software, replacing spare parts, and redesigning the entire workflow, a process that can cost millions and shut down production for months. Even if another country later develops a cheaper or better robot, the switching costs are so much higher that most companies simply won't take the risk. So, the more countries automate with Chinese machines now, the deeper this dependency grows and the more impossible it comes for the West to compete. And that's where the danger begins. Think about what this means for the West. For over a century, they've led the world because they controlled the backbone of global manufacturing. Britain did it in the 19th century with steam and iron. America did it in the 20th with computers and microchips. But now, China is trying to do it again, this time with robots. And that will give them strategic leverage the ability to influence and control the future of production everywhere. This isn't just a theoretical threat. We've seen how this story plays out before. In the 1970s, OPEC did it with oil, when they cut supply from the US as a response to their Israel support. Their economy went from a strong 10% growth all the way to a deep recession. Now, imagine a similar kind of leverage in China's hands. These robots could very well be the turning point of the power struggle that's been simmering between Washington and Beijing. You see, for decades, the US has tried everything to contain China's rise. Trade wars, tariffs, sanctions, but most importantly, by cutting off access to advanced chips. Those chips are what powers everything in the modern economy, from smartphones to supercomputers. And right now, NVIDIA and a handful of US companies are the only ones capable of producing the most advanced versions. And that monopoly has given Washington enormous leverage over China all these years. But China's robotics revolution changes the game. What's just happening now isn't just competition, it's structural interdependence on a global scale. The US controls the chips China needs, and China controls the robots that make the goods Americans rely on. That's a form of leverage the US can't counter without hurting itself. It mirrors an older era. In the last Cold War, the Soviet Union had energy, but America had the technology and capital the world depended on. Allies relied on the US because their growth ran through its system. Today, that balance is reversing. The world's factories no longer run on oil, but on chips and electronics. The US still controls most of these. But China is using its robotics and its financing to become the backbone of global production. And it now lends, while the US borrows with nearly $472 billion, committed to developing countries to modernize using Chinese technology. That dependence runs through everything. Smartphones, cars, essential products increasingly rely on Chinese-backed tech and financing. And as countries tie their industries to China's system, 
Washington can no longer assume old allies would stand with it in a crisis. If this Cold War follows the same pattern of the last one, the next global leader will be the country that controls the world's industrial future. China's automation push was never just about efficiency. It is about control. Robotic arms, automated factories, and code are pieces of a larger strategy. In a world where power is exerted through economics, not armies, what is at stake is independence, technological control, and the ability for countries to choose their own industrial path. Asterisk, asterisk, thank you so much for watching, all the way to the end. If you enjoyed this deep dive, please smash that like button, share your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you'll never miss a future update. We've got a lot more exciting tech stories coming your way. Until next time, stay curious, stay inspired, and we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.